Hello everyone, welcome to another Get Wisdom video. Today I would like to talk about the prophetic ministry. You know that in this end time, so many prophets, especially false prophets, they have now risen in our world today. In different parts of the world, there are so many false prophets. But if you study the book of Revelation, they talk about the spirit of a false prophet. There is a spirit behind their false prophecies. And that's a spirit from the devil. It's not the spirit of God. Now, it is not news to us because Jesus said, in the end time, false prophets shall rise and they shall deceive many, especially those who don't know the scriptures. They shall be deceived by these false prophets. So it is very important for you to have time to study the word of God. It's very, very important. If you are a believer or a Christian who is lazy in studying the scriptures, the Bible says that you shall be deceived. The chances to be deceived are high. So you need to have your own time study the scriptures. Read the Bible. When you're reading the Bible, I remember some time back I used to say this, that reading the Bible, it doesn't mean that you're going to preach somewhere else or maybe you are reading because you want to preach the word of God somewhere. No, you are reading to know yourself and to know God for your own self. You are reading to know the future of your life. When you study the Bible, you are discovering what is coming ahead to make yourself become aware of what is coming ahead. Now, the prophetic ministry is the ministry which is very important to the body of Christ. That's why the devil, he came up with his own false prophets to deceive so many. But not all will be deceived. Even though many will be deceived, but not everyone will be deceived. That's why the solution is get to know the word of God. You must be able to study the word of God by yourself. Don't wait for a man of God to read the word of God for you. If you have a chance to go to church, well and good. But so recently we had the effects of pandemic. One of it was church. Churches were shut down. No one was going to church. That's a proof that you need now to build God within yourself. You need to build God's word. You need to build your spirit. Let God build up inside you by studying the word and by prayer. It's very important. You need to have time to study the word of God by your own self. We are no longer in the old times. We are in the end times. If you are not careful, you might lose the salvation which God put inside you. In my recent videos, I've said it several times that the last thing that the devil will come and attack is the salvation. He's coming to frustrate many people so that he can uproot the salvation which was planted inside you the day you believed in Jesus. You must guard that salvation. Guard it. Because before the rapture comes, the only thing that gives you the capacity, the ability to be taken is the salvation that you have inside you. Once you lose that, you will not be taken when the rapture comes. Most people, they don't know about this. But this is the truth. This is the real truth. You must guard their salvation. Wake it out. Build it up through prayer, through studying of the scriptures. So that when these false prophets show up, you will not be deceived. You know, I'm saying this because of also what is happening in South Africa. You know, now the church in South Africa doesn't have a good shape. I remember some time back, God showed me in a vision. I saw the map of Africa and he showed me the southern part. I saw South Africa there. You see, so this message especially is going to you, South Africans. You need to check yourselves again. It's high time that you have been trusting, putting all your trust in the prophets. But the Bible says that even if they are prophecies, they shall fail. Prophecies shall fail. What you need is Jesus. Now, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 9 and 10, the Bible says, it says that for we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part shall be done away. I want to explain that scripture. It says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part, which means the prophets don't have the complete thing. They have the prophecy, just a part of it. They have just a part of the prophecy. They don't have 
the full package of it. It says that, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is part shall be done away. He says, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part shall be done away. In other words, when that which is part, no, when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part shall be removed. See, God is saying, we prophesy in part, and whatever we know, we know in part. But when the complete thing has come, when the complete thing has come, then that which is part, the only part that we know, that half part, shall be done away. Because you have the complete thing now, therefore no need for the part thing. No need for that small piece, because you have got the complete thing. So you need to embrace that complete thing. What was he talking about? You remember Jesus said, he says, be ye perfect, for your Father in heaven is also perfect. He says, your Father in heaven is perfect, therefore, be you perfect. You have to be perfect, for your Father in heaven is perfect. Then Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Therefore, Jesus is perfect. Jesus is perfect. So, he says that we prophesy in part, and we know in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part shall be done away. What is this perfect thing that he's talking about? That's Jesus. Jesus. The perfect that God is talking about here is Jesus. So, there, there are prophecies in the world. So many prophecies are given by different kinds of prophets in the world. But, the perfect thing is Jesus. That's why today, if you follow the prophetic ministry today, you see that prophets, they prophesy bits and pieces of messages. It's not complete. They only know in part. And they prophesy the part which they know. But the part which is complete is Jesus. Jesus is complete. He's perfect. So the word of God is complete and perfect. What you need now is God's word. You must be directed to the word of God. If you meet the man of God who is directing you to the word of God, follow him. If you meet a man, he's only talking about himself. He's talking about himself or he's directing you to something different except God. Flee from that man. Flee. Run away from him. I will, I will talk much about this. You see, uh, I remember in one of my previous videos, I said something like, the ministry that we have here on earth, we found it. We are not the ones who started the ministry we see here on earth. We found it. Some people started it. And then we will leave it also. We found it. We are not the ones who started the ministry. And the people that are here on earth that we are ministering to, we are not the ones who brought them here on earth. It is God who did it. God brought the ministries which we are now servicing the people with. God was the one who brought the people that we see today. So, and then God is the one who started the whole thing. So, if you want to know your situation, what you're supposed to do about your situation, be it financial situation, or maybe it's the marital situation, or maybe, you know, it's about your health situation, Turn to God. Turn to God. God has the solution. God has the answer. Not man. We are only here to present to you the word of God. I can tell you the word of God. I'm telling you the word of God as I'm doing now. But I don't have the complete thing. I only tell you the part which I received from God. So I'm sharing with you. But the perfect one is Jesus himself. He's the one who can tell you the complete thing. Who is Jesus? The Word of God. So you need to have your own time study the Word. My brothers and sisters in South Africa, you have been embracing false ministers for many years. It's now time for each one of you to turn to God Almighty. You need to turn to God Almighty. Each one must take time and repent and study the Word. Study the Scriptures. Turn to God Almighty. You have been entertaining idols for too long. I was in South Africa about five years ago. 
And then I saw in the streets of South Africa, there are people who practice witchcraft. You know, so many witch doctors everywhere. And then we say we are Christians. We go to church and after that we still also entertain the witch doctors. You are mixing up. God cannot bless that way. Now, whatever is going on now in South Africa is a result of what has been wailing up for years and years. It has been there. For years and years, it has been there. So God says, it's enough. What God does is just remove his spirit and give it to the one that is only him. That's what God does. You remember Egypt was once a superpower. What happened to Egypt is no longer. It is only history today that Egypt was once a superpower. But Egypt was a superpower before. The whole world, Egypt was stronger. I'm just saying this, not to scare you, but you need, each one of you, you need to bow down to God and look to Him. Stop seeking prophets. Seek God. The Bible says that the young lions lack and suffer hunger, but they which seek the Lord shall not lack in a good thing. You must stop seeking men of God. Start to seek God. You need to start to seek God. Start seeking God. How do you see God? By studying His Word. God was revealed to us in His Scriptures. You must go to the Scriptures. You have to be serious with your own selves. Otherwise, you see a great fall. You see a great fall. The church in South Africa, you're going to meet so much difficulties if you don't change. You need to go back to the Scriptures and follow what the Bible says. The Bible says, I just read you a Scripture now. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, verses 9 and 10. He says, we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part shall be done away. Hello everyone. Welcome to another part of Get Wisdom video. In this part, I would like to wind up the first topic which I started previously in our, uh, our first video of this topic of the prophetic ministry. So I would like to wind up in this second part, in the last part. Now, um, in the first part, we looked at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 9 and 10, where the Bible says, for we prophesy in part, and we know in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part shall be done away. So this was Paul. He said that for we prophesy in part. He says, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, that which is complete has come, then that which is perfect shall be done away, shall be removed, shall be abolished. The same way like Jesus Jesus, when he came, he abolished the Old Testament. He came up with a New Testament. And there was a covenant of his blood. That's why he's, he tells us to partake the Holy Communion, to remember his blood and his body, which he gave for all of us. So in this New Testament, what matters is Jesus Christ. For everyone to be where he is today is because of what Jesus did. The life he lived the suffering he went through, and the death he died. When you put all that together, is what has made us to be what we are today. We cannot keep quiet and be talking about other things. He's the perfect one who died for every soul that lives today, in this world and in the world to come. So, we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when Jesus Christ comes, then that which is part shall be done away. Jesus is the only part which must be embraced by everyone. Because that's the complete, that's the completeness of God. Jesus is complete. That's the completeness of God. Jesus is the completeness of God. Now, the prophets in the world, some are false, some are true. Now, how can you know the false prophets? I told you in my previous video, I said, any prophet that is directing you to something different apart from God, that is telling you to 
honor a certain name, not the name of Jesus. And that is showing you another power, not the power of the Holy Spirit. That one is a false prophet. Run away from him. Because the only name that is given to us, which is above every other, every other name, is the name of Jesus. Jesus is the only name which is perfect and is above every other name. It is the name which was given all the power in heaven or earth and even in hell. That's the name of Jesus. So any man of God who says he's a man of God, but he directs you to himself or to something different instead of God, that is a false prophet. Very important. Very, very important. I'm talking about you people in South Africa. You know you have been deceived for, for so long, for too many years. Because you are seeking the prophets of God. You are seeking the men of God. You have to seek God. It's time to seek God's face. You must look to the Bible. The Bible is perfect. You must look to Jesus. Jesus is perfect. You must look to the power of the Holy Spirit. That power is perfect to give you whatever you need. Very important. You must seek the face of God, not the face of prophets. You must seek God, not men of God. All you people in South Africa. Otherwise, the church in South Africa. There's a vision that God showed me. The church in South Africa. This message is coming to you. Otherwise, if you don't kneel down and look to God and depend on God, let God come into your lives. Let your mind be conscious of God only. If you don't do that, you're going to be in chaos. You're going to be in trouble. The devil will disturb that country. The devil will disturb you people very very important you need to seek the face of God all of you must look at God it's very important now there are so many prophets there in South Africa so many false prophets are plenty there because you have showed your desperation you have to be desperate for God not desperate for men of God you must seek God not men of God you must study the Bible. Look to the scriptures. Look to the name of Christ. The Bible says that looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We look to Jesus, not to men of God. We have to look to Jesus, not to men of God. And it is Jesus now who can direct us to, to say, go to that man of God or go to that man of God. There are some true prophets of God in the world and there are also false prophets. And Jesus said that many false prophets shall rise in this end time. Because many shall seek solutions to their difficulties. So false prophets shall rise and they shall deceive many. But in the midst of those false prophets, there are true prophets of God also. So many of them. And one of them is prophet T.B. Joshua. That is a true man of God. He directs people to God Almighty. He directs people to the name of Jesus. He tells people the power he does is the power of the Holy Spirit. The power he functions with is the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, he's the real man of God. I'm saying this because I know so many men, if including some men of God, they criticize him. That is wrong. You cannot criticize the anointing of God. That's a true man of God. Stop criticizing Prophet T.B. Joshua. That's a true prophet of God. Okay, now, let me talk about the false prophets now. How can you know the false prophets? I told you. The prophets who claim to be men of God and they, dire and, and they are directing you to something different, maybe to themselves, or maybe to some material wealth, or they tell you about their money, or they tell you about themselves, they put their names in front, they're talking about, you know, the material wealth, things which are temporary, instead of directing you to God Almighty, they are false prophets. I know about asking God to bless you with material blessing, I know, I am blessed too, but I'm talking about how to recognize the false prophets any prophet who doesn't talk about jesus like the source of his uh, his wealth is jesus anyone who doesn't talk about that jesus being the source of his wealth is a false prophet the false prophets will talk about themselves they'll put their names in front instead of putting the name of jesus because the only true name the only perfect name that you need is the name of jesus that's the only name that you need you need the name of jesus only that's the name that you need. That name can heal you if you are sick. That name can bless you financially if you are broke. That name can give you 
Whatsoever thing that you need can give you peace in your marriage, peace in your family. Very important. That's the name of Jesus. That's the name which every demon bows before. That's the name which the devil trembles and he flees from him. That's the name that we cast out demons. In the name of Jesus, they, they are casted out. We lay hands on the people who are sick in the name of Jesus and they become healed. That's the name of Jesus only. So I want you to know that the only way you can know a false prophet, study the Bible, compare with what he says, connect to the Bible. Compare what he says with what the Bible says. But if you don't know the scriptures, then you are doomed. They will, they will deceive you. So don't be deceived. Study the scriptures. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus said that whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he shall give it to you. Very important. We look to Jesus alone. The author and finisher of our faith. Now, there is another part which I wanted to say, which is very important also. Very, very important. Now, you see, the Bible says, when that which is perfect has come, then that which is part shall be removed. Hmm. So Jesus comes with the New Testament. The Old Testament was just a part. That one is done. It's done away. But the New Testament is the perfect testament. Because somebody died for that. Somebody gave his life. So we are living according to what Jesus gave. He gave his life. We're living according to what he did. So that testament is guaranteed. There's a guarantee there is a guarantee for this New Testament. That's Jesus' blood. Then his life, the life that he lived, the death that he died, the blood which he shed on the cross, and the resurrection, and then ascension. You put all that together, and it says that you are living in this time where this man, he lived, he died, then he rose again, then he ascended to heaven, and he says he's coming back. We are in that testament. So the testament which is perfect is the New Testament. So, the most important thing is to study what he says in the New Testament. There's a reason why I'm saying this. I'm coming. Now, you remember in the Old Testament, God revealed himself to Moses as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then, he, and then Moses asked God, he said, Lord, so when I go to the Israelites and they ask me who has sent you, what should I tell them? He said, I am that I am. Give them this name, I am that I am. The name I am that I am, he didn't, God did not give this name to Abraham. He didn't give this name to Isaac. He didn't give this name to Jacob. He gave it to Moses. Then in the New Testament, we have Jesus. God didn't give this name of Jesus to Moses, to David, to Isaiah. They only prophesied in part. But we are given the name of Jesus, which completed everything. He's complete. On the cross, he said, it is finished. It is finished. What is it that was finished? Have you asked yourself a question? What is it that was finished? Whatsoever thing that the prophets wrote about, Jesus completed it. Everything is done. Today, we have to pray in the name of Jesus. We have to live our lives in the name of Jesus. We have to ask the Father in the name of Jesus, not in the name of a prophet. We have to pray to God in the name of Jesus only. Okay. In the Old Testament, Jesus is only mentioned by the prophets in bits and pieces. In the New Testament, Prophet John, he said, I am not the Messiah. I am not one of the prophets. I am not Elijah. Then the Pharisees said, who are you? Then he said that I'm the voice that cries in the wilderness. Make straight path for the Lord to travel. Then the Pharisees, they said that if you are not the Messiah, if you are not one of the prophets, if you are not Elijah, why do you baptize? He said, I baptize you with water. But the one who is standing among you, he's bigger than me, he's greater than I, I am. He said, that one is perfect. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with power. With the Holy Spirit and with fire. With the Holy Spirit and with power. With the Holy Spirit and with fire. His name is Jesus. John didn't know him. Read the Bible. You discover that John the Baptist did, did not know Jesus. He just spoke prophetically according to what the Holy Spirit gave him. He said that he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. 
And Jesus said that you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. So there is fire and there is power within us. From the day we received the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Alright. Now, John came in, then Jesus came. Now, connect with what I said in the Old Testament. Moses, God revealed to Moses as God of the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the New Testament, that is past. God is no longer identifying himself as God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the New Testament. I know so many people will be, what is this man talking about? I will show you the scriptures. I can challenge you. We are in the New Testament. Now, go to the New Testament. Read all the books. Don't read uh, bits and pieces. Don't read just a part of it. Read from Matthew to Revelation. You will never see God. You will never see the apostles identifying God as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Instead, they gave a revelation. They, they put all the pieces together and they said, Oh, it is Jesus. Then they said, We pray in the name of Jesus and we pray to God. God is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll give you three scriptures that talk about this. The first scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31. I read, The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. Now, this was Paul, alright? He said, he was addressing to the Corinth. Then he says, The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knows that I'm not lying. Then he turned to the Ephesians. He wrote to the people of Ephesus. He said, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. He said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul didn't live together with Apostle Peter because I'm coming with the scriptures, uh, the scripture that Peter gave here. Apostle Paul lived many years, a number of years after Jesus lived and died. You know, Apostle, uh, now what I mean is, Apostle Paul started to reign in his ministry years after Jesus had already gone. Generations after. So many years after, years after. But he spoke the same thing which Peter spoke. Now, I'll read what Peter said. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Verse 3. Peter said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hmm. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In this New Testament, God is identified as God of the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is known as God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Not God of Elijah. Not God of Moses. Not God of uh, Elisha. Not God of David. He is known as God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why Jesus Christ? Because Jesus is God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Jesus is God of Moses. Jesus is God of David. Jesus is God of all the prophets. Isaiah, all of them, if you put them together, Jesus is their God. So God is identified as God as, as God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why am I saying this? Because false prophets, they caught Old Testament and they present themselves to the people of today, deceiving them. That's why you see so many people, so many uh, 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 believers, they said, I pray in the God of prophet so-and-so. I pray in the God of prophet so-and-so. No, the Bible says that you need to pray to God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not God of prophet so-and-so. Another one comes in, you know, um, uh, uh, I pray to the God of so-and-so. God of prophet so-and-so. Don't confuse people false prophets 
true prophets of God, they have to tell you that you have to pray to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To God of our Lord Jesus Christ. So any prophet that puts himself in front, he's telling the people to pray in the God of his name. The God of him. God of his name. He's putting his name there. That pray to the God of me. False prophets. We are in the New Testament. Be careful. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, it was just a revelation which is already part. It's part and it is done away. It was already just a part and it was done away. It's removed. Now we are in the New Testament where we are praying to God and Father of our Lord Jesus and we pray in the name of Jesus. That's what you need to know. Don't say, God of prophet so and so, I ask you to bless me. No. You pray to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. And the power is the power of the Holy Spirit. You must attend to the, to the word of God. The Bible says that attend to my words. My son, attend to my words. But if you are believers who doesn't know the word of God, false prophets will deceive you. You'll be confused. You'll be destroyed unknowingly. The Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. They lack knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. They don't know the word of God. You don't know because you don't study. You don't know the word of God because you don't attend to the word of God. The Bible says that I attend to my words. Jesus said, attend to my words. God says, attend to my word. My son, attend to my words. Incline your ears unto my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them, keep them within your heart. For they are life to those that find them and health to their flesh. So if you don't know the word of God, the false prophets will come in and deceive you. They will quote scriptures of the Old Testament, making you to believe that they are quoting the word of God, but they are not. You need to know these things. A real prophet of God will exalt the name of Jesus. A real prophet of God will exalt the power of the Holy Spirit. A real prophet of God will direct you to the word of God. Any prophet that directs you to himself, that is trying to put his name up, not the name of Jesus. False prophet. Any prophet that is talking about his power, I have the power, I have the power. Instead of saying that is the power of the Holy Spirit, false prophet, run away from him. Run away from him. I'm talking to you South Africans. You have been deceived for many years. It's time for you to get up and wake up. For how long are you going to be deceived? For how long are you going to be fooled? You are people who, who are educated. You are educated. At least you can read and write. You are educated. Read the Bible for yourself. Don't just sleep. And then other people, they come with their lies and be deceiving you. But at the end of the day, they steal from you. And then they run away from you. And then you start to publish them in the media everywhere. You are being fooled. Grow up. You are Christians. Get up. You need to wake up. Study the Bible. Each one must read the Bible for himself. You must turn to God by your own self. Each one. Every house. Every family in South Africa. You must read the Bible to yourselves. Spend time, live godly life. Read the Bible, study the word of God. Pray in the name of Jesus. Don't wait for a prophet of God to come. Don't wait for a man of God to come and tell you to do it. We are in the end time. Only the name of Jesus matters. Only that which is God matters. Only that which is of the Holy Spirit matters. Remember, we pray to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray according to the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray in the power of the Holy Spirit. That power, it is the power that is in the name of Jesus. is the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus said, the false prophets shall even mention his name, Jesus. Shall, some of them, they call the name of Jesus. Now, do you know why they call the name of Jesus and then they are not hurt? Because the name of Jesus was given to us to save mankind. The name of Jesus cannot kill mankind. That name Jesus doesn't kill a human being. Is the name which was given as a gift to mankind. Is the name which man was made to be saved with. So according to the spiritual law of new creation, the name of Jesus cannot kill any, any man. Is the name which is meant to save mankind. That's why false prophets, they can mention the name of Jesus and nothing bad happens to them. Because you become saved by mentioning the name of Jesus on your mouth. So that's why Jesus said, they shall come in my name. They shall come in my name. Deceiving so many people that they are of Jesus, but they are not. So be careful. Be careful. If you don't know the scriptures, you'll be doomed. 
you're going to perish in hell. Very important. So, don't forget. Look to Jesus alone. Study the Word of God. Read the Scriptures. Depend on the Holy Spirit. That's the pow that power is enough. Don't depend on men of God. Depend on the Holy Spirit. Depend on Jesus. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus. Don't use any... Don't use any other name when you're mentioning God. God of prophet so-and-so. Prophet, uh, God of so-and-so. No. Use God of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is enough. That is enough. And when you do that, God will bless you. God will bless you. God will protect you. God will keep you. God will bless you abundantly. God will keep you. God will defend you. God will save you. God will heal you if you are sick. God will bless you if you need a financial blessing. God will bless you with good marriage if you're looking for a partner. God will bless you with peace if you're looking for peace in your marriage. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. That's what matters. So pray to God in the name of Jesus. Pray to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember it has passed from being God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. We have passed that level. That was only a part. But when that which is perfect is come, the part is done away. The perfect is Jesus. That's why you don't see any writing in the New Testament as God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's not there. In the New Testament is not there. And we are in the end time of the New Testament now. So we have to pray in the name of Jesus. Only. That's so strong and powerful. May God bless you and keep you. May God protect your lives. May God Build your souls with his word. May God open your spiritual eyes to see that which is hidden in the spirit. So you will know the truth. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. May God open your eyes to see the truth of God. May God help you to have a good understanding of the scriptures. May God bless you and protect you and keep you. May his face shine towards you and give you peace in the name of Jesus get wisdom wait up peace